Now we're going to take a look at containers. The reason that you would use Docker container images to scale your analysis is because they're more lightweight than working with virtual machines. And I've included a diagram from Google's documentation here, and you can really see the difference in that containers use a container runtime, which is shown in blue, rather than having guest operating systems for each application. So it's a common design pattern when you start building scalable, reproducible research. Around reproducibility, another aspect of working with Docker is on the container images, you're going to capture your tool configuration. So whether you're using a standard tool such as GATK or BLASTN or your own script, your configuration will be part of the recipe for the Docker container. So what you'll be working with here are container images. So best practice is to first start with container images that other researchers have built. And fortunately, there's a number of public repositories where you can look. So the focus of this particular section is going to be on using built containers. I do realize that some of you are going to want to build your own containers, but it's a non-trivial activity. So if you're going to do that, make sure you read all the information on this page, including the links. So just to give us a sense of working with containers, they're lightweight images, so smaller than VMs generally, and they are built using the Docker daemon or Docker service from a Docker file. Now this is a super simple Docker file for the BLAST tool that we've been working with that I have set up on a repository. Just to give you an example of what a hello world looks like, it is not best practice. I have links to best practices in this document, and again, if you're going to be building Docker files, it's really important you read all that. So as I've been mentioning, when you get started, I recommend that you search in some of the public repositories, and one of my favorite for researchers is BioContainers. And here I've done a search for GATK4, and you can see right at the top of the search, there are three different containers that are already available. Now when you're working with containers on GCP, a typical pattern is you'll find or create a container and you'll want to test it. Now you can test it locally and there are a set of Docker tools that you can set up on your local machine, but a sort of neat way to test is to work with a Google Compute Engine VM. They have the Docker binaries and tools already set up and I think it's a great time saver, so I'm actually going to show you how that works. Now before we go out there, this is an article I've referenced and I really recommend that you read. It talks about the nuances of testing your containers on these managed VMs. And then here are some reference examples if uh, you just want to get started really quickly. This is a rep repository that I made and it has a Docker file in it, has a little script that runs on startup for Blast. And then I've built this into an image and this is what we're going to be working with in this example. And this is Docker Hub, one of the public repositories. So using the Docker tools, I built this at Blast into an image, and we're going to just be working with it by pulling it down. Now, if you want to run an existing image on Compute Engine, there's really two different ways to do that. So inside of Compute Engine, we can simply say deploy a container image to this VM instance. Now, the text box here is going to show you not Docker Hub, but Google's own container registry, googlecontainerregistry.io and you can uh, register images in GCR. We'll be looking at that later in this course. Um, however, you can also use this for Docker Hub. Now, if you wanted to pull a Docker Hub image, uh, what you would do is you would take the uh, URL of uh, Docker Hub and put it in. So for our particular case, that would be registry.hub.docker.com forward slash the name of the organization, so my name, and the name of the Docker image, Blast N. An alternate way, if we uncheck this, is we can go into the boot disk and click change. And we can see that if we scroll down, we can select from some container optimized boot disks. Now what's the difference? In this latter case, we would get the Docker tools and then we would run a Docker command docker pull to pull the image. And we're going to actually do this. So we're going to select container optimize and click select. And then we're going to click create. So I think of this as a Docker container development environment. And I really like it because rather than having to install something on my own machine, I can just use this VM quick like and test out Docker containers. 
Now the image is available, so we're going to SSH into it. And then while we're waiting for that to connect, we're just going to go over here to uh, Docker Hub and copy this command, docker pull, and go back over here to our window, make it a little bit bigger so you guys can see. We're going to say docker pull. And uh, what that's going to do, it's going to check for the image. And if it's not there, it's going to pull it down. And then once the image is pulled down, we can use our standard Docker commands in the terminal, Docker run, Docker execute, for example, and we can uh, test out our image on this VM. So I find this to be a great um, way to quickly get things up and running. And again, you're on the Google ecosystem here, so uh, the, the, uh, the Docker pull is pretty fast. So you can see now Docker images, for example, just use the standard commands. And then if you want to start at Docker run, and then you'll be working with your tool.